People in Beersheba, Israel, have recently taken an interest in the Well of Abraham, an ancient water well located near the southeastern extremity of the old city. So what's going on there, and why are people visiting the well more frequently? Is there something otherworldly going on here, or is it merely a biblical setting? Watch the video to find out. The Bible says that Abraham and Avimelech got into a fight over a well after Isaac was born. They made up by having a party and letting Abraham know that the well he dug belonged to him. Avimelech went back to the land of the Philistines, and Abraham planted a tamarisk tree next to the well. The well became known as Beersheba. Later, his son Isaac kept fighting with the Philistines to keep well. After a generation, Jacob and his family left Beersheba and moved to Egypt. In all of the times that followed, people lived in Beersheba, and more wells were dug along the Beersheba Valley. Still, Abraham's well was still known as Abraham's well for a long time. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was the cornerstone of a new city, which is now the old city of Beersheba. Even though the well isn't used anymore, it is still a major landmark in modern Beersheba, which is the largest city in southern Israel. Biblical Significance of Beersheba In ancient Israel, Beersheba was located in the southern portion of the land and was a city. Because the Negev Desert was located in the south of Beersheba, Beersheba served as a demarcation for the southernmost limit of cultivated territory in Israel. In the Old Testament, the proverbial phase from Dan to Beersheba is used nine times to characterize the entirety of the Promised Land, with Dan serving as the northernmost point and Beersheba serving as the southernmost point. A distance of about 270 miles separated Dan and Beersheba from one another. In Genesis 21:31, Beersheba is described as the location where Abraham forged a treaty with Abimelech, the ruler of the Philistines in Gerar. Abraham and his family had relocated to the Negev region and were living between the cities of Kadesh and Shur at the time. He remained at Gerar for a period of time. Sarah, Abraham's wife, caught Abimelech's attention because of her beauty, and he brought her into his harem without realizing that she was already married to Abraham. As a result of this, God placed a curse on Abimelech's household and revealed to him in a dream that Sarah had been wed. Almost immediately, Abimelech gave Sarah back to her husband along with numerous offerings of peace. Abraham and Abimelech finally became allies, and Abimelech reassured Abraham that God would be with him in everything that he did by saying, God is with you in everything you do. Now that we are here in front of God, you must swear to me that you will not engage in any dishonest dealings with me, my children, or any of my descendants. A little while later, Abraham went to Abimelech and protested that the servants of the king had taken over a well in Beersheba that belonged to Abraham's people. As a result, Abimelech returned the well to Abraham, and Abraham presented the king with seven ewe lambs as a sign and a seal of their agreement. Beersheba, which literally translates to the well of the seven or the well of the treaty, was the location where this event took place. The name of the location comes from the treaty. At that time, the Bible says that Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there he invoked the name of the Lord, the God who has always existed. And Abraham decided to spend a considerable amount of time in the land of the Philistines. Beersheba is also mentioned in the narrative concerning Isaac, Abraham's son. Isaac, following in his father's footsteps, traveled into the land of the Philistines, where there was a famine in Canaan. Isaac's father had done the same thing. When he proceeded to live there, he discovered that the Philistines had stuffed all of the wells that his father's slaves had dug with dirt. This was a disappointment to him. The wells were reopened, and he dug several new ones as well. Following that, Isaac moved his family to Beersheba. There, the Lord made the same promise to him regarding the number of his offspring as he had previously made to his father Abraham when he appeared to Abraham. Isaac followed Abraham's example and erected an altar before which he invoked the name of the Lord. Abimelech showed up again and demanded an identical pact with Isaac to the one he had previously established with Abraham. This was a repeat performance. Isaac agreed. He made a feast for the king, and during it, they made an oath to each other that they would live in peace. Isaac gave the location the name Sheba, which can be translated as either oath or seven on the same day that his servants found water in a new well that they were drilling. By doing so, Isaac ensured that the region would continue to be known by the name that his father had given it, and Beersheba became the name of the town that was eventually established close to the wells that Abraham and Isaac had called. A number of years later, when the inheritance of the Promised Land was being distributed, the region surrounding Beersheba was included as part of Simeon and Judah's portion. 
Beersheba was a place where a number of individuals had their first encounters with God. Both Isaac in Genesis 26-24 and Jacob in Genesis 46-2 had dreams at Beersheba in which they communicated with God. Both of these dreams took place in the same location. When God talked of Hagar in Genesis 21-17 and Elijah in 1 Kings 19-5, they were in the wilderness near Beersheba. Beersheba was also the location where two of Samuel's sons, who were known for their wickedness, served as leaders in 1 Samuel 8, 1-3. This corruption of the judgeship was the impetus for Israel to call for the establishment of a monarchy in 1 Samuel 8, 6-9. Beersheba seems to have been a center of false worship by the time of the prophet Amos, during the reign of King Uzziah, and the prophet urges people who would properly worship the Lord, do not trek to Beersheba. The location of Beersheba, which originally stood on this land, is now marked by old ruins. Several ancient wells have been unearthed in the region and they continue to supply the area with water. It's possible to interpret Beersheba as a metaphor for the experiences in our lives that prompt us to pray to the Lord and invoke His name. The Lord demonstrates His steadfastness on our behalf in the face of calamity and the anguish of our hearts in 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The day or location where we reached a turning point in our lives becomes a memorial in our hearts, much in the same way that the altar, well, and tamarisk tree in Beersheba were memorials for Abraham and Isaac. A personal Beersheba might be established in us hearts, whenever God makes His will clear to us or delivers us from some danger in some way. Then, when moments of uncertainty or contention arrive, we will be able to repeatedly go back there in our hearts to find confirmation that God is carrying out His plan. But why story of Abraham attracts the people what is so unique about it? When Abraham wandered the sandy dunes of Beersheba over 4,000 years ago, he could not have dreamed that people would still travel to the well connected with his sojourn in the region thousands of years later, but not to water camels. Undoubtedly, Abraham's well is a one-of-a-kind tourist destination that can be found on the fringes of Beersheba's old city. It is part of an international visitor center that can be found in Beersheba, the capital of the Negev. The Abraham Center is the only venue in Israel that is dedicated to presenting the narrative of Abraham via the use of advanced technology means and historical context. The Abraham Center was established six years ago and is designed as a tent. According to Einat Sasson Heredia, 40, who is the director of Abraham's Well, we have roughly 25,000 visitors coming to visit our museum each year. These visitors include Israelis as well as tourists from other countries. The name Abraham has come to represent many things, including bravery, faith, peace, and hospitality. She made the argument that the story of Abraham is a universal one that serves as a starting point for the world's three major religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. The story of Abraham is a worldwide one that serves as a starting point for the world's three major religions. Abraham's well is the only well that has traditionally been referred to as the well of Abraham, this is despite the fact that Beersheba is home to hundreds of historic wells. In accordance with the teachings of the three monotheistic religions, it is generally accepted that Abraham was the one who first dug the well. There are even dated newspapers and records that refer to this well by its former name, Abraham's Well. Edward Robinson, an American biblical geography scholar and theologian, were born in 1794 in Connecticut. He traveled to the Holy Land in the 19th century, where he set out to identify different locations from the Bible, including the area of Beersheba and the Negev Desert. When reaching the Beersheba region, Robinson recorded the following in his tour journal. Here, therefore, is the site where the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob often resided. Possibly this particular well was dug by Abraham right here. In point of fact, when Egyptian President Anwar Sadat traveled to Beersheba with Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin more than four decades ago, one of the places he wanted to see was Abraham's well. This was the location where Abraham and the king of the Philistines, Abimelech, had signed a peace treaty all those years ago. Although the well that can be viewed at the visitor center today, in addition to another, does not date back to Abraham's real time, it does date back to at least 1,000 years ago. Ohev Zion provided the following explanation, noting that the well has a diameter of 3.75 meters and a depth of 13 meters. It would be lovely to have the original well from Abraham's time, but wells go through countless changes over history, Ohev Zion said. 
there would be no way imaginable that the original structure of a well erected 4,000 years ago could be retained in its original state, remarked Ronit, another tour guide at the facility. Even during the time of Isaac, the Bible tells us that Isaac went back to Beersheba and had to dig a fresh well in order to satisfy the people's thirst. Why? Because the original wells that his father had dug had been destroyed. According to Ronit, back then the well functioned as a kind of cafe. It was a meeting place for people to undertake commercial transactions. It was also a site where individuals could find a husband or wife, and it was a place where new ideas were discussed. For Abraham, this was the ideal location at which he could discuss the concept of there being only one God. The fact that Abraham dug the well in the area indicated that he intended to settle in Beersheba, and this activity continues to shape the character of the modern city even to this day. The oath of peace struck between Abraham and King Abimelech, as well as the seven wells dug by Abraham and Isaac in the area, all contributed to the naming of the city that serves as the capital of the Negev. This particular well is responsible for the naming of the city. According to Ohev Zion, Abraham also planted a tamarisk tree close to his well. This tree has the ability to make the water taste better. To this day, there is a big tamarisk tree growing next to the well at the visitor center, which serves as a reminder of the tree that Abraham originally planted. While in the late 19th century, Claude Rainier, Condor, also wrote about it, the main well, which is 12 feet 3 inches in diameter and over 45 feet deep, was lined with rings of stonework down to a depth of 28 feet. About 300 yards to the west is a second well with a diameter of 5 feet. To the east is a third well that is dry, 23 feet deep and 9.2 inches in diameter. The ropes of the water drawers have worn grooves into the sides of all the wells, but we found something that was a bit disappointing. The stonework is not very old. On the south side of the big well, 15 steps down, there is a stone with an Arabic inscription on a tablet. The tablet has the date 505 AH, which means it was made in the 12th century. This stone must be at least as old as the ones at the mouth, which have more than 100 channels worn into them by the ropes of water drawers over 700 years. So that was all about the video. Hope you found it informative. Then do subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and press the bell icon for more updates like this. For more updates like this.